anything can be a simple spark. Anything can serve as a gentle nudge to just take a moment to chat with God, or as I often put it, just point your heart toward Him. Hey there, friend. Welcome to Beneath the Fig Tree. I'm Rose, and I'm so glad you're here, like really, really a lot. And can I tell you something? We all know that Bible reading and prayer are important. They're non-negotiable even. But I also think there's so much more to a great devotional life than the, quote, perfect quiet time we've all been taught about. I want to give you permission to lay down the guilt and the shame about what your devotional life looks like compared to what you think it should look like so that you can discover how you best relate with God and can cultivate a devotional life that you love and look forward to. Around here, I'll share loads of inspiration, lots of tools and encouragement, all to help you cultivate the kind of meaningful relationship with God that you've always longed for, but you didn't know how to make it happen. You ready to breathe new life into your devotional journey? Grab a cuppa and let's chat. Welcome to day seven of the 10 day do something challenge. Ever hear the old adage, find a penny, pick it up, and then all day you'll have good luck? Do you still think of that little limerick whenever you find a penny on the ground? I do sometimes. But a few years ago, I decided that any time I found a penny or a quarter or whatever on the ground, it would be a spark, a gentle nudge to pray. So I would pray for whoever I saw next when I looked up, even if I didn't know them. Now, when I find a penny on the ground, I look at the year, and if it has my birth year, I consider it a love note from God, sort of him saying, hi there, I see you, and I'm thinking of you, and I love you. If it has Brandon's or Dakota's birth year, I say a quick prayer for them, and if it has some other year, I just think about someone or something significant about that year and pray accordingly. So for several years now, finding a penny or any kind of change on the ground has actually sparked some sort of interaction between God and me. The thing is, anything can be a simple spark. Anything can serve as a gentle nudge to just take a moment to chat with God, or as I often put it, just point your heart toward him. So let me share a couple of other sparks that happen really quite frequently for me, and maybe they'll give you some ideas too. One of them is colors. So one morning on my way to work, I found myself at a red light. And when I was looking around, I noticed that four or five cars were all stopped at the four stop signs around me. Every single one of them were red. So then later when I got to work, this huge red truck was parked in the parking lot and there weren't any other vehicles there. A similar thing happened at church a couple of years ago, only then it was clothes instead of vehicles. Several people there were all wearing red and I sensed God telling me to look at what I was wearing. Yep, it was red. So while it isn't always the color red, I've learned that these encounters with colors are simply God saying hello or pay attention, I'm about to do something. Another spark for me is numbers. 111, 555, 1212, any numbers. And I know some people get all freaky and superstitious about repeating numbers, but for me, they're just like God waving a friendly hello or trying to grab my attention. And sometimes those repeating numbers lead me to look up verses with that address, like 333 and looking up Jeremiah 33.3, which is actually a story for another time. But you get the idea. The possibilities for sparks are endless. So here's your challenge for today. Keep an eye out for or choose some simple sparks that when you come across them, remind you to pause, to pray, to talk, or to just praise God. Okay, 
that's day seven. And I would love to hear how today's challenge went for you. What did you find? What were your sparks that reminded you to just stop and point your heart toward God? So hop on over to the Fix Community Facebook group and let us know there. Or if you're getting the emails that go with this challenge, you can re just hit reply there and let me know. I love hearing how these challenges are doing for all of you. I'll drop the link to the challenge emails and the Fix Community Facebook group in the show notes just in case you aren't already engaging in those ways. Also, if you found this helpful... Make sure to follow or subscribe because I have lots more great ideas for your devotional life. And if you know anybody that might be encouraged or looking for ways to spark their devotional life, I would be honored if you would share this with them. So let's cultivate a devotional life you love, like really love. It is possible and it's easier than you think. Chat soon, friend.